Street Fighter V Season 3 comes in the form of a title update, and if you didn't like the game when it first came out, perhaps you ought to give it another chance now. It's true that SF5 came out a little too early for its own good and left more than a few people feeling disappointed with it, but a lot has changed since then. Here's my list of the top 10 reasons to like Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. Number 10. Improvements over two seasons. Okay, so right off the bat, for those that dropped Street Fighter V after checking it out in the very first few weeks, there's a lot of improvements already in the game, never mind AE, which should already help change your mind a little bit. Things like the massive cinematic story mode, that might not be perfect, but it's a hell of a lot more than we'd typically expect from a Street Fighter game, or the many stage transitions that feature everything from extended parts of the arena to weird items that can temporarily be on top of your opponent's head during the next round. None of these things were present when the game came out, and that's not to mention other improvements like the best of three games for casual and rank matches, the ability to purchase colors that were only available after completing the hard survival mode, a reduction of the input lag the game used to have, major improvements to the Capcom Fighters network option, support for legacy controllers added to the PC version, plenty of characters and even classic stage remade, and even the removal of the bad idea that was to introduce a virtual coin named Zenny that you were expected to buy with real cash. And well, there's probably even more than that. Street Fighter V is a game that has changed a lot over the years, with constant updates bringing more than a copious amount of costumes to Chun-Li, though that part is also true. So if you haven't been checking it out, you might be surprised to find how the game is these days. Number 9. Graphic Improvements Now, they're not fixing Ken's banana hair, but the general user interface has seen various visual changes. The main menu now sports a yellow and gold palette as opposed to the black and blue. The character select screen has been revamped to accommodate for extra fighters and the background changed from a globe to a gold arena. Side note, I personally like the globe, but I get the feeling I'm a minority here. Quite noticeable is also the health bars that are now golden when your character is in full health, making it easier to see that change. Not that I feel that it was a major problem, but still, it's a nice touch. These things surely aren't a big deal, I'm only giving it the ninth spot on my list ahead only of the already implemented changes, but if it helps even a little the game look and feel more attractive to new players, I'd say it's worth it. Number 8. Player 2 Rematch Option This is one of those things that we never stop to think about until the day we find ourselves missing it. It might be a silly little thing with such an easy fix, but boy that option was missing. For some weird reason, Street Fighter V has, so far, given the first player complete control over that, which made tournament organizers establish the now infamous thumbs up dynamic after a match. Those days, however, are soon to be over. AE will fix that small but annoying detail and, like it should, make it so both players have to hit the rematch button in order for a fight to restart. Number 7. Team Battle Mode I would guess that a large number of players, like myself, won't really make much use of this new mode, but those lucky enough to be a part of a group of players interested in having fun with the game without taking it too seriously will surely be happy with the addition. Team Battle features a heavily customizable mode where characters are separated into two teams and battle until someone loses all of their fighters. Once a fighter is eliminated from on site, the next fighter in that team lineup fights the character that eliminated the first fighter, and so on and so forth, with different options like how much health is restored being completely optional. It's a good way to face your buddy if you follow infiltration school of many characters, or to get a whole group of friends involved into what's usually a serious two-player thing. Number 6. Balance Changes With every new Street Fighter title or season, Balance changes must come, and while they'll never be unanimously approved, most times they do make the game better than before in the great scheme of things. For AE, Capcom has even made some surprising additions like giving Ryu his much requested Jodan Sokuto Geri, or taking extra steps to make anti-air jabs and throw loops less effective. Again, it will never work 100% of the time, but it still shows that the company has been listening to the feedback given by the community and is doing their best to make the game feel as balanced as possible. Number 5. Disc or Download Street Fighter V Arcade Edition will be available both as a standalone disc featuring all the characters already released up to Season 2 Zeku 
or a free title update for players that already bought the original title. This really is the best of two worlds. Making an optional free update, nobody needs to feel betrayed for jumping into the train too soon. Hello Vanilla Marvel vs Capcom 3, I'm talking to you. And being a new game gives Capcom another opportunity to have its game revealed and scored by the media, who's hugely capable of influencing the public's perception of the game. It's a win-win scenario. Number 4. The Return of Classic Fighters So far we've been getting new characters as DLC for Street Fighter V every year, and after going through a whole year of new additions to the cast, it's finally time to see some old faces joining the roster again, starting from Sakura and finishing the year with Sagat. That should be enough to create some major hype, and one should never underestimate this power when it comes to get more players into the scene. It's always nice to see the Street Fighter universe expanding and new characters being added to the lore, but we also need a healthy dose of familiar faces around and there's no question in my mind that characters like Sakura, Blanca, Sagat and Cody will do wonders to bring many new and old players. Number 3. New ways to get and spend fight money The fight money system is probably never going to be perfect for everyone. While we're all happy with the possibility to unlock our own stuff just by playing the game, Capcom will still always offer faster and easier methods to get extra content by spending real cash, something that unfortunately is the norm nowadays when it comes to games. At this point we should feel lucky if we don't stumble upon an extra greedy company milking you out of all your money, like that famous one whose name is composed of two letters but we'll likely never be completely free of this system ever again. So considering the ways this could be even worse, having at least some hope to unlock extra characters and stages by playing the game, it's a good thing. But things were very limited before. You had some one-time only ways to get large amounts of fight money, and then you were left with repetitive weekly missions and a ridiculously small amount of fight money prize from online battles as your only way to get more of this virtual coin. AE brings a huge overall in the whole fight money system, with new and exciting challenges being added regularly, where you can pretty much bet your hard-earned fight money against special CPU bosses for the chance of being rewarded with more credits than you invested. It's a cool single-player mechanic that offers yet another way to get fight money and also adds interesting secret boss characters to the game. Not only that, but we'll have crossover customs from other Capcom franchises, exclusively in this mode. Anything from Captain Commando, Beautiful Joe, Star Gladiator's June, and who knows what else. It's a nice little touch for Capcom fans. Number 2. Arcade Mode Well, that was obvious, it's the whole reason behind this update's name, though I still don't like it. So it's a non-brainer that it is a big reason to be excited for it. Capcom made a bold and maybe silly move when they decided to release Street Fighter V with no arcade mode at all, but they found a good way to make up for it, though a little late. SF5's arcade mode goes above and beyond our expectations, offering many different paths based on different titles of the series, a shit ton of exclusive artwork to unlock after finishing them, and even monthly ranks to give people a reason to go for the higher score. Oh, and bonus stages too, cause what would a Street Fighter arcade mode be without bonus stages? Number 1. Second V-Trigger If there's one aspect of Street Fighter V that advanced players don't like, it's the fact that it feels a little limited, not giving people the same amount of chances to express their individual playstyles if compared to older titles. While we can't say that it's a solution for all issues, adding a second V-Trigger for every character and making the player have to choose between them before every match does give the game a lot more depth, with more aspects of each matchup to analyze. Even if it's not as much as it would like, you gotta admit that it does give you a little more to think about and that's always a good thing. So there you go, if you're still not convinced to give Street Fighter V Arcade Edition a chance, you probably never will. The rest of us, however, is happy to see how much the game has improved since its modest release and can't wait to see what the future holds for us. If you enjoyed this content, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't and ideally share this with a couple of friends. Also feel free to let us know in the comments what's your favorite thing about AE or what change you would like to see in the game. This has been Edu, the Kemi player, and I'll see you guys later.